If you're concerned about autism, going to have a child soon, you're concerned or you have a child with autism and you want to know the causes, this video is for you. So stay right here. Faceless Caseworker, we have some new research that just came out. It was published not too long ago. Uh, actually, a couple of days on the 28th of May. Um, give a big, big shout out to uh, Barcelona Institute for for Global Help. Shout out to Sylvia Namini, Claudia Arella, and over the 20 writers on this research. This is a peer-reviewed article. This is not from Post or anything. But this is a recent research with a possible link between Tylenol during pregnancy, which can lead to autism and ADHD in children. All right. This research was cited in a European Journal of Epidemiology. All right. This research was conducted by the Barcelona Institute of Global Health. Now, for before we get into that, before those who don't know about autism, autism is a uh, a condition that involves difficulty socializing, repetitive behaviors, and nonverbal command um, communication. Um, autism is an arise, and a lot of people are concerned when having kids. Um, there's really no test for it. Um, you can only find out maybe in a second, uh, the 18 months to the tech second year of your child. Um, but this research has found out that um, there's a possible um, link between Tylenol and Encetaphanin, which is aspirin, the main ingredient of aspirin, which may lead to autism. Now, specifics of the study, I have it in my hand right here. Um, you want to get some research? We'll show you and break it down. Now, like I said, the study was was done by the European Journal of Epidemiology. Okay, it's a big word. I took that class in college. I think I got a B minus. But if they would have tested me on taking uh, spelling or seeing the word, I probably would have got an F minus. But yes, um, the population that was tested was a population, was multiple populations in Europe. Um, I think it was in Spain specifically. The study involved a total of 73,881 mother and child pairs. And it was from six European populations. All right. Now, this was done based off of a questionnaire. All right. The mothers were asked whether they took aspirin before, you know, previously when the child was being uh, conceived, or did they take aspirin post the child being developed all right and they asked him did they take aspirin or any over-the-counter aspirin between the months of 0 to 18 months or during the pregnancy all right now the children were assessed at ages 4 to 12 using certified diagnostic instruments now if anybody knows about uh, the tools that they use in uh, special education to determine whether a child has a development disability they use a lot of tools several of those tools are an autism tool they use specifics to see if the child can communicate um, verbal knowledge and things like that and it's how they determine whether the child has autism all right now the mothers were tested at age at the time of the birth to eliminate any side um Variants. Variants is what we cause other causes of other things. So if when you're doing a study and you're trying to determine what is the cause of this, you want to find that are there any other things that may also cause that. So they're called variants. All right. So they also look at the type, time of birth, education, body mass, alcohol intake, whether the mother smoked, the mental health. All right. Now here is the big research and what was discovered. The results showed children who ingested aspirin before birth were 19% more likely to subsequently have autistic-related symptoms than children who weren't given aspirin at that time. Also, ADHD. We didn't even mention ADHD, which is another condition. Now, ADHD is a chronic condition, all right, including hyperactivity, impulsiveness, which can lead to low self-esteem, trouble with relationships, problems in school or work. So, a lot of the times they're diagnosed. You may hear, uh, um, Certain people talk about how they're over-diagnosing children in school with ADHD. Some people feel that the kids are just different. They're hyper, you know, they they probably learn in a different capacity. But studies are showing that aspirin taken before zero to eighteen months K 
can lead to a possible 90% increase of your child getting ADHD or autism. This is groundbreaking here. This is definitely groundbreaking because people have been searching and, uh, you know, conspiracy theorists and have been shut down by many studies and researchers to say that this is not an actual fact and they don't have an actual research to determine what can cause autism. But this is groundbreaking. This is new research, people, that just came out, I believe, May 28th. All right. And it's a study out of Europe and it's saying that aspirin can lead to this. Aspirin. Who would have known? Now, it's always led up to doctors and your physician whether to determine what you should take. Because sometimes kids, you know, you, you may want to take aspirin for a headache or the pain that you're, you're experiencing while you're carrying your child. But now doctors have to find an alternate method of solving uh, pain for mothers. So this information needs to get out there. So I advise, and this is my analysis here, the faceless caseworker. For those who don't know me, I am a caseworker. I've worked in the field for over seven, eight years. I've dealt with people with mental illness. I've dealt with people with uh, uh, physical illnesses, uh, terminal illnesses, people with serious drug habits. I've dealt with people in shelters, broken families, domestic violence. Um, I also was a care coordinator that is similar to a case manager, but we also deal with family. We also deal with health issues, cancer. We also deal with we, we deal with all type of issues, medical, mental, um, you name it, dementia. I've worked with a lot of people and I've taken a lot of courses, studies, of course, I have two degrees. Um, and yes, so the research showing that aspirin is actually, uh, this is also research that you have to take it with a grain of salt, but the studies showing that the questionnaire after, and mind you, this study was done for many, many years. All right, if you'd like to research the study, just look up autism and aspirin and Tylenol, and you'll find the study. I believe it's a free study online for all the mothers, fathers, parents out there expecting children, thinking of having a child. If you're thinking of having a child, stay away from aspirin, Tylenols, any type of pain medications. All right. If you are already holding child, speak to your doctors. Now, mind you, I'm not a doctor, but I'm a counselor, just like I speak but most of my clients, I tell them I am not a doctor, but I will give you sound advice. But I do not prescribe medication. All right. Speak to your doctor. Uh, stay safe. Get the right results you need. All right. If you're looking to get any more information about health, child care, what can prevent your child from having any disability or live your, have your child live a well and a high level of life of well-being, please tune into the Faceless Caseworker. Uh, this is a selfless show. We're all about you guys. We're trying to help. I have a, a step brother, not a step brother, but step nephew that has autism. Um, and you know, he was so his parents love him very much. You know, he may be have some issues. Well, it depends. Autism is a spectrum, and there are many different levels. You know, depending on uh, the intervention early in life. The child can live a great life and, and can be very productive, could be a working man. But some levels of autism are not so lucky. They have less communication, some can't speak, but can still live a productive life. This is America, and we do care for everyone. All right, guys. So that is the research. 19% increase if you take aspirin, Tylenol, or any type of medi uh, medication for acidophamine that's the way you pronounce it uh in so stay away from that stuff ladies all right speak to your doctor find an alternative medicine so this is not um this is not clout chasing this is not um hype this is not a gimmick this is not nonsense and this is not stuff that i created and made up on my own this is actual research conducted by a research company who's invested millions of dollars to determine these things now, this research was done with a questionnaire. Um, obviously, other research exists out there. If you're interested, I'll leave the link at the bottom of the page. Um, hope this information was good for you guys. Um, stay safe, and we'll speak soon. Thank you.